Hey, Jeff Nelson from VegSource. Today we're looking at Dr. Brooke Goldner's response to my critique of her lupus study. She recently went on Chef AJ's channel and shared her thoughts. And a quick note, this isn't personal. Dr. Goldner's had hardships she's spoken about and she's clearly helping people selling programs. I'm totally fine with that. Everyone's got to make a living. But when those programs are marketed as being backed by science, I think it's fair game to ask does the science actually hold up? And that's what I've been doing here. I see so many people who cause the greatest amount of problems in their life because they are more determined to be right than they are to be healthy, to be happy. Uh, they just will kind of dig in rather than be open, be curious. And when we can release the need to be right and be open and curious, we start to evolve and become more wise and more well and more healthy and you know, that's really what I encourage in people. This is a framing Dr. Goldner uses repeatedly. If you question her claims, you're in your ego. You are not curious. But skepticism, that isn't ego. It's the foundation of science. And asking questions like, does unlimited flax oil really make you lose weight? Yeah, that isn't being closed-minded. It's how progress is made by questioning. And Dr. Goldner's framing critics as ego-driven is a classic deflection. It's one even con artists use to dodge scrutiny. I'm not saying Dr. Goldner is a con artist, but it's the same rhetorical move. Make skepticism the villain instead of answering the question. You can have uh, really unlimited amounts of omega-3 fatty acids from chia and flax, and they will also only accelerate fat loss. Omega-3 fatty acids, even though they are a fat, they can't become body fat. And so he put people, he put people on the oil version. It's a lot easier to titrate. He had some people up to thousands of calories just of omega-3s alone. Thousands. The higher the dose of omega-3, the faster the fat loss with no limiter. That's an extraordinary claim. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So what evidence do we have? Not published peer-reviewed studies, not independent replication, just testimonials. Actual research on omega-3s and weight is mixed. Here's a 2015 study found omega-3s may reduce belly fat, but didn't show weight loss overall. A 2021 review of 20 studies found inconsistent effects. No study supports unlimited omega-3 consumption without weight gain because calories still matter. So I don't fight I, I, results versus assumptions. It doesn't make any sense, right? And that's what's usually the issue. Um, I have not yet seen someone say, yes, I've tested this and this is what I've come with. Usually the negativity comes from, I've assumed this uh, because I did it this way. I, you know, I think this. But no matter how smart we are, um, our own thoughts are wrong a huge percentage of the time. When we realize we're wrong a lot, then we can stay more open and more curious. I only teach from results. I never teach from my thoughts or assumptions. Dr. Goldner contrasts her so-called results with critics' assumptions, but her results are uncontrolled testimonials. In case reports, they're useful for generating hypotheses, maybe, but they're not scientific proof of efficacy. So we've seen this pattern before. Joel Furman published a similar study years ago that I've deconstructed in another video, which I'll put in the description, a link to it. But Dr. Furman's heart disease reversal study turned out to be an anonymous online survey. There was no verification, no follow-up, not even confirmation that the people answering were actual patients or actual people. And he drew a lot of conclusions about how great his diet was based on this survey monkey style anonymous questionnaire. He also included six case studies, six stories about his top patients, just like Dr. Goldner has with her three stories, and to show how well his program worked. And here's a kicker, one of Dr. Furman's showcase success stories, a woman celebrated as proof that his diet reversed heart disease, and she actually died in her sleep in what appeared to be heart disease six months before the study was published. Yet she was still included as a big success story. So this is the danger in relying on self-reported anecdotes, doctors telling you about their star patients. They make for great you know, marketing copy, but they're not rigorous science. And Dr. Goldner's three-person case series with no controls, no follow-up, very little data, it falls into the exact same trap. Because Jane is asking, and it makes sense to me, for example, if you were to eat 500 calories of flax seeds, then you will not gain weight, even if that's 500 calories more than you would need a day? Yes. Wow. Because the calorie model 
is actually outdated and not a useful indication of how somebody is going to um, metabolize their food. Not everything you eat can become fat. I can eat 10,000 calories of kale. I'm not going to gain an ounce. Why? Because you can't turn kale into fat. It's true that calorie counting isn't perfect. Different foods are metabolized differently. But calling calories outdated, that is misleading. That's a massive calorie surplus still leads to weight gain. Sure, 10,000 calories of kale, which is an exaggeration that's over 400 pounds of kale. But the underlying claim that some foods are immune to weight gain, that flies in the face of basic thermodynamics and decades of nutrition research. So statements like this risk misleading people who are already struggling with weight. And ironically, Chef AJ herself takes the opposite approach from Goldner. Her own program is built around calorie density, not ignoring calories. She teaches volumetrics, as she sometimes calls it. And AJ even tried Dr. Furman's higher fat program for years, some years back, and she couldn't lose the weight that she wanted. And only when she switched to McDougal's low fat calorie density approach, thanks I think to Doug Lyle, did she lose the weight and improve her health. And that's what inspired her to create her own books and program around those same principles. Remember, AJ platforms lots of different voices, whether it's Furman, Goldner, McDougal when he was alive. And that doesn't mean she endorses all their protocols. She interviews uh, everyone, even when she disagrees with them. I've known AJ for 24 years. I introduced her to McDougal in 2001. She comes to my birthday parties. She is not on the flax oil or the any oil bandwagon. There is something about our minds that there is this pull, this, this need for a lot of people to be right. And it is the cause of really most of the problems we deal with between the wars happening all over the world. So when folks are in that mindset, then anybody who's teaching something even slightly different, if you are totally committed to being right over everything else, you see them as a threat. Again, this frames critics, including me, as driven by ego or tribalism. But my critique, it's not about who's right. It's about what's right. Are the claims true? Are they supported by data? Framing legitimate questions as attacks that's a rhetorical move. It discourages scrutiny rather than answering the evidence. I've also heard a fascinating claim from someone I trust in the plant-based world. This person said that three people who tried both Dr. Goldner's smoothie protocol and True North's water fasting with Dr. Alan Goldhammer, all three of them told my friend that their lab numbers improved more with Goldner than with Goldhammer. Now, if that's true, that would be, you know, huge. Goldhammer's fasting results are some of the most dramatic autoimmune reversals ever published. So I asked my friend to, you know, talk to these three people and ask if they would share their lab work. A a anonymized, you know, redacted, even just directly with Goldhammer, not with me. And so that we could compare pre and post water fasting with pre and post Goldner, because that kind of data could be groundbreaking. But here's what happened when we dug in two of the supposed three people who did both water fasting and Goldings approach. Well, two of them never even did a water fast. And one was actually a participant in Goldner's own study, the same, same study that I've been critiquing here. And the other only did Goldner's program. She never did a water fast either. The one person left who supposedly did both Goldner's program and a water fast supervised by Do Dr. Alan Goldhammer. Well, that person refused to share her data, saying she didn't like my earlier video about Goldner's study and saying that she didn't want to, quote, throw Brooke under the bus. So after looking at this whole claim that Goldner's program, you know, beats water fasting at True North, it turns out there's zero evidence to back that up. So what started as, you know, three people got better results collapsed into one unverifiable anecdote, no lab work, no data, just a story that evaporates when you ask for receipts. And this was a claim, you know, shared with me by someone who a lot of people, including me, look up to, you know, and they, it turns out they were passing along nonsense. And that's a theme we see in a lot of the wellness space, huge promises, tiny studies. And when you scratch the surface, it's all testimonials and marketing. Speaking of omega-3s, I'm going to be doing an interview uh, next week with Dr. Tim Raddick on my channel. And he's a dietitian with multiple degrees and decades in public health and nutrition. And we're going to go deep on omega-3 myths. I see so many vegans being duped into this omega-3 nonsense. And Tim can talk about so many things, like the fact that uh, your body makes all the omega-3s that it needs 
from plant foods. Even you know raspberries and greens have enough ALA for your body to convert into EPA and DHA when it needs them. Like during pregnancy, conversion ramps up. Pregnant women are making more omega-3s and then it wraps back, ramps back down afterwards after they give birth. Did you know that? Did you know your body doesn't want any more omega-3s present than it needs? And when you're pouring more omega-3s in, you're not doing yourself a favor because too much omega-3s is not harmless. Uh, they can oxidize. High doses increase, increase bleeding risk. So much so that the U.S. Army studied this and they avoid omega-3 supplementation for soldiers on the battlefield. You don't want people in combat supplementing omega-3 because if you're shot, you'll bleed out faster and die. And that's the kind of nuance you won't hear in the marketing. My last thought on Dr. Goldner is that Chef AJ pointed out to me that Brooke is also a psychiatrist and a lot of people struggling with chronic illness also struggle emotionally with depression, anxiety, hopelessness, and that they could use daily support. So is it possible that what really helps Goldner's clients isn't dumping half a cup of flax oil into a smoothie, but the psychological counseling and accountability that you're getting, the hand-holding of being able to call Dr. Goldner on her cell phone at any hour and say, you know, I'm looking at this bag of Doritos. Can you talk me down from, you know, eating the whole thing? Now, that's not a criticism. Mental health support is hugely valuable. People being a health coach can be very helpful. There's lots of people playing that role. So AJ saying Dr. Goldner does a lot of handholding for people who are paying to have access to her. It's a reminder that we have to separate what's really helping people from what's being sold as a nutritional magic bullet. So if you want to learn more on omega-3s and the science behind them, subscribe to me, my sub stack. It's in the description so you don't miss uh, that interview with Dr. Raddick. And as always, question big claims. Curiosity is good, but curiosity backed by evidence is even better. All right, thanks for watching. If you found the breakdown useful, hit like, share it with someone who's curious about these programs, and check the description for links into my deeper dive into Dr. Furman's study and other videos on plant-based nutrition myths. And if you've tried either Dr. Goldner's or the True North, True North Health program fasting and actually have lab results to share, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. See you on the next one.